a little circuit fun today with an automatic audio volume leveling circuit. And uh, take a quick look at its operation. Uh, the output signal is shown in light blue on channel 2 and the input is here on channel 1. And we can see that's about uh, 180 millivolts peak to peak at the input. And as we see as I adjust the input amplitude even now at about 3 volts peak to peak uh, I'm still getting about the same output amplitude. And uh, I put this together for a friend of mine who's got a scanning receiver and some of the stations that he scans to have a low volume, some have a high volume. So by putting this circuit uh, in line with, uh, you know, to drive his speakers, uh, he could essentially equalize the amplitude of all of these stations. So we'll take a look at uh, how the circuit works, and look at the schematic, walk through it, and then uh, kind of complete the project with uh, an amplifier at the output. And here's the schematic for the audio leveling circuit. It's actually pretty simple and variations of this have been published online uh, for many years so there's nothing really magic here. And uh, it's designed to take an audio input uh, that's typically the same level that you'd use to drive a speaker. So um, say from the external uh, speaker jack from a radio or something like that. And the audio basically passes through this path which is really just an adjustable attenuator. It's just AC coupled at both ends to remove any DC block that, or DC that might appear on either side. And the attenuator is made up of essentially this resistor and these two diodes. Uh, the, when these diodes are off, there's very little attenuation. As we start biasing these diodes on, then we're going to get some attenuation through those diodes. Uh, their impedance drops and we're going to uh, start reducing the output. It's designed to go from, again, speaker level down to a relatively small level, 50 millivolts peak to peak or so at the output, to then drive uh, an auxiliary amplifier. So the variable attenuation is done by varying the bias through these diodes. And the way that's done is by driving essentially a current through these diodes that's proportional to the peak signal level that we're seeing at the input. And that peak signal level is measured by this circuit right here which is simply a amplitude or peak detector. Okay, so let's take a look at how the peak detector works. Uh, this resistor and diode connected transistor sets up a bias here so that the overall bias at this point is roughly equal to um, just about the turn on voltage for Q2. These are you know, the same transistor type. So, uh, so that ensures that all we need to do is just start collecting some charge on this capacitor here above that bias level to start turning this transistor on. So the charge is collected by peak detecting uh, you know, through these diodes. All of these diodes that are shown here again are 1N34As which are germanium diodes with a ver very low essentially turn on voltage. Once you start getting, you'll get a couple of microamps through and we're only talking about uh, you know, a few hundred millivolts or less. So the way this works, let's, let's start off assuming that there was no audio input coming in. The voltage sitting at this capacitor is going to be very close to you know, this voltage here. This transistor is just barely cut off, just turned off, or just barely. So, as, so let's say as the input voltage here starts to rise, okay, that rising voltage is going to come through this cap and basically charge up you know, through this diode, charge up this capacitor. So once that, that kind of happens with that first half cycle, as this voltage now begins to fall, okay, that's going to pull this voltage down on this capacitor. But it's going to pull it down to the point until this diode turns on. Once that diode turns on, that kind of pins that voltage there. The other side of the capacitor will continue to drive down with the input. So then as the input then rises again, the charge of this capacitor will cause the voltage here to rise up again transferring charge over to this capacitor. So essentially these two capacitors, these two diodes, you know, basically form a, you know, a positive almost peak to peak detector to take the amplitude of this signal and represent that as a voltage on this capacitor. So as the voltage of this capacitor rises, we start turning on this uh, transistor harder, you know, sending more current through it, which sends more current through these diodes, which lowers their impedance which makes this voltage divider um, divide the voltage down even more. And uh, with everything, with the, using the same diodes here in this arrangement, uh, it basically tracks pretty well over a very wide range, you know, 40 or 50 dB 
dynamic range at the input and giving you a very constant output, just a, a few dB of variation at best. We started off the video by taking a look at uh, how well that amplitude is leveled over a wide input signal range, and we can kind of see that now. It's helpful to look at uh, the operation of that peak detector. So that's on channel 3. If we add that in here, we can actually see how that peak detector voltage rises and falls as we you know, raise the voltage up or down. And that peak detector voltage is the one that is essentially controlling uh, the bias through that transistor which is sending current through the attenuation diodes. And to take a look at the charging characteristic of that peak detector, uh, let's turn off channel 2 and uh, I'm going to change the signal, instead of being a constant amplitude here, I'm going to step it from being a low amplitude to high, low to high, and we'll just trigger on the high. So by doing that now, I can actually see, here's my low amplitude, I step it to a high amplitude, and we can actually see the charging characteristic of that peak detector. So on this uh, 500 hertz signal, I can see within about four cycles I've reached essentially you know, the full amplitude of that signal. Now in order for this to work well on audio signals, we want it to detect the, the peaks, the largest amplitude of those signals, but we don't want it to follow uh, you know, all the variations in someone's voice. So we want the peak detector to have a fast attack, which it, it's got a pretty good attack time here. We want it to have a relatively slow fall time, so that uh, when uh, there's a gap in the voice or someone gets a little bit quiet during their transmission, we don't want the gain turning up and down during that. So really during normal speech patterns, we want it to kind of hold that peak level. But then when that transmission ends and another transmission comes on, we want it to kind of slowly revert back to you know, the, uh, the constant amplitude again. So, so we, we'd see we've got a relatively fast attack time. Let's go take a look at the uh, release time, how long it takes to decay. Okay, so to do that, uh, what I'll do is I'll change uh, my trigger, the trigger on the falling slope of my modulation. And now I can see as the signal's going away, now that, that uh, peak is falling, but I need to slow the, um, the scope up here a little bit so I can kind of see the entire effect of it. So I can see, so I'm at uh, 40 milliseconds of division here, so I can see, you know, 40, 60, 80, you know, about 100 milliseconds or so to decay back down to the new level when the signal amplitude drops. And that's probably pretty good, about 100 milliseconds, a tenth of a second. Um, that should give us a, a good release time for normal speech patterns and, uh, and also recover quickly waiting for the next uh, audio signal. Now, all of that is t typically controlled by, um, you know, the attack time is really just driven by the way we've got this set up, and that's pretty good. The release time can be uh, adjusted by either increasing this capacitor value or increasing the bleed resistor value. So to listen to the effectiveness of this circuit, uh, I've added an audio power amplifier uh, at the output. And you essentially could replace or just in parallel with the output load resistor add a simple audio power amp. Now what I used here is just something I had on hand it was an LM384. Uh, you could also use an LM386 or any other you know, audio amplifier that you like. So this LM384 is kind of a nice uh, easy to apply thing. It's a fixed gain. So I'm taking the output from the limiter or the uh, leveling circuit and I just put another pair of these 1N34 diodes here in kind of anti-parallel and they're just serving to clip the signal because um, when while this peak detector is attacking a large signal can get through for just uh, again for a few milliseconds that will just kind of clip that amplitude a little bit so uh, and because we're dealing with you know small signals here typically of about 50 millivolts peak to peak th these will work pretty effectively for clipping anything that goes over a, a few hundred millivolts and then we go into a potentiometer to adjust the volume the volume level of the driver that's driving the speaker. Okay, I've got a, this little volume control here. I can turn this up and listen to that signal. Right now it's sitting at a, a very low level. So we can hear that tone. And uh, what I'll do is just to show you know, how this thing works if this circuit wasn't in place, I've got a little shorting clip here that I'm going to use to short out the peak detector. So now as I change the input amplitude can certainly hear the volume change. Okay. 
if I remove my short and now that leveling circuit is in place now I'll turn that volume of the signal amplitude up the same amount you can see even if I go very high in signal amplitude the level that's coming out is actually quite uh, quite constant and uh, very easy to control and to look at this a bit more dynamically uh, let's uh, short that peak detector out again and change the signal to that pulsed uh, on off or high and low level signal turn the volume up so you can hear what's going on so we can hear with that uh, that change in signal level how it's getting louder and quieter if I simply remove my shorting jumper now if we take a listen you hear the little click when the volume changes but there isn't an appreciable volume change uh, at the output. In fact, if we turn channel 2 back on again here, we can kind of see how the, imp the output amplitude is remaining relatively constant from one uh, signal level to the other compared to that huge difference that you have without the leveling circuit in place. Of course, now slowing the scope down, uh, we can actually take a look at the attack and release behavior uh, of this circuit. So uh, let's grab an acquisition here. So I can actually see my high amplitude, my low amplitude, my high amplitude. And we can see, well, the, if we bring up channel 3, you can kind of see its attack is very fast and its decay is very slow, is relatively slow. If we take a look at the output amplitude, lay that in here, I can see the output amplitude during the high signal level and then while the decay is happening, we're, you know, the signal is going to be depressed, but as soon as that resets back down again, uh, we can actually see that that amplitude comes back up to be about the same as it was when the signal level was high. So it turns out to be a very effective circuit for being able to uh, level out a widely varying burst of audio that may be coming from a scanning receiver. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the project. and. Uh, I'll get this over to my friend Bruce that uh, is looking to add this to the output of uh, his scanner. Thanks again for watching, and comments are always welcome.